All right, everybody. So the next phase of our gridded portrait is to begin the painting. Once you have officially um, managed to transfer each section of your image to your canvas, um, identify which level of gray you have in your picture and where it goes, and make sure to only take about two different colors of paint uh, to begin with because you don't want to use an excessive amount of paint. Make sure not to add water to your paint because that will thin it out and cause you to need multiple coats. But you do want to put a little water on your brush and the reason why I suggest that you have a sponge close by is because once you put the water on your brush you're going to just gently wipe a lot of it off so that you can have a nice edge and let's talk a little bit about the brushes. So I have three different brushes here. This one that's in my hand is considered a round brush. It is a smaller size, probably a two or a four, and it has a point on the end of it. This brush is intended to do details and edging. Uh, most of you do not have one of these, but the reason I have it here is just so that you have a reference. This is called a filbert, and it is like a rounded um, edge for your brush. I won't be using that today, um, but this is called a flat brush, and the reasoning behind it, it has a straight edge where the bristles end. This one is great for large areas, and depending on how you use it, you can get some nice edges as well. And so I'm going to actually wet both my brushes and dry them off a little bit on my sponge and get them ready to use. So for this part of the assignment, I took uh, the black, and then I think I took uh, the seven, um, in my grayscale because that's what I consider this color here in my portrait. This area here I'm going to use a 7 for. And this whole area here is obviously just the black by itself. So given the fact that I need a detail uh, brush for the edges because some of these edges are a little bit squirrely, um, I'm going to start using this brush. So what I'm going to do is put my brush in the paint and I call it sharpening the point. Basically what I do in order to keep my brush at a point is I roll it in my fingers while I'm using it in the paint and that will give me a nice pointed um, edge. And then what I'm going to do is just gently go around with this brush and paint the areas that I see as the edge and I keep adding more paint to it because I want to make sure I have a nice um, good amount of coverage. Anyway, and I'm going to continue to do this. This is going to require a little bit of patience, but once I have my edge done, I'm following the lines that I made when I drew, but once I have my edge done, I obviously did a little bit of this already. I'm going to go back in and thicken it up a little bit with what is left over um, for paint that's on the brush, and more or less just keep going around until I get a significant amount of my edge done. And I don't want to spend a long time doing a video of just me painting because I have a feeling that you'll probably find it slightly boring after a while. Um, but I'm just going to do a small section here. And the thing about acrylic paint is that it tends to dry relatively quick. So anytime that you are um, painting, and you're going to set down a item that has paint on it, for example, your um, palette knife or your brush, if you're not going to use it, you may want to just set it in the cup of water so that the paint doesn't dry and cake. Because once the paint dries, it's very difficult to get it back off. It does not come off clothing once it's dry, nor does it like to come off brushes. So. Once I'm done with this brush, because I have a significant area here that I'm going to paint, I'm actually going to rinse it off in my water cup. Sorry, I just realized that's a little bit off camera. I'm going to rinse it off in my water cup and then dry it a little bit on my sponge and set it down because I'm going to use this brush for a larger area. So again, I already did wet the brush, but it's not very wet. And I don't want to put any water in the paint because I want my paint to be thick, although I don't want it to be too thick because if you have ridges or areas that are raised, you'll find that that looks funny from a distance. It is noticeable, even though you might not be able to see it up close. 
So right now I'm filling in the area that is a little bit larger. It doesn't require detail and so I can use a wider brush. But if I were to want to use this brush for detail because I have a straight edge, the one way that you can use it besides the way I'm doing right now is oddly, you can, I do make it a point to put paint on both sides, but you can get a pretty straight edge if you choose to by using your brush kind of like this. Not that I need this here, I do not. Um, but it's another way to use what is called your flat brush, if you so choose. But basically, I'm just going to complete about the area where I um, detailed the edge. And you'll see things kind of start to come together here. It starts to look nice. And if at the end of class you are still working and you haven't quite finished the area and you don't want to waste paint, what I usually recommend if you're cleaning up, before you clean up wherever that area is, that large area, this is what I do. I wipe off the brush and then there's less to clean up. But again, you're going to want to do a nice job of rinsing your brush. And rinsing it just in this cup of water before you put it away may not be enough. I highly recommend that you run it under the sink really well. Things to avoid when using these brushes. You do not want to leave like especially not your detail brush, you do not want to leave them upside down in your paint cup for very long or water cup very long because sometimes it will cause the brush to permanently be bent or like, you know, curled. And if it is, then you're going to struggle with having um, control over getting a nice edge. The same thing is said for one of these. It will end up, you know, permanently like this. So when you put them away in your pencil box, you also want to make sure that they're not shoved in there, that, that maybe they're at a diagonal if they're, they have a longer handle like this one. And um, that way you can avoid having a bent um, paintbrush. There's a lot of little tips and tricks that you will hear me um, give as we are going throughout this assignment. I tried to include them here. Um, but like I said, only take two, maybe three at the most uh, colors of paint to work with. Do not take a lot. Because we're not going to put them back, more than likely you'll forget which color it is you have. Unless, of course, you want to write in Sharpie. I already know that this was black and this was seven, and that's why I only took two. It was easier to keep track because I was going to work on this area with uh, <clears throat> this paint because this is already dry. Um, another technique as far as like knowing when is the right time to switch to another color is uh, if you are working with one color, and you want to put another color right directly next to it, you want to make sure that the first color is already dry. Otherwise, you're not going to have a nice edge between the two colors. They're going to end up sort of blending or mixing together because they are so close to each other. Uh, and another technique, um, if you are right-handed, that you might want to consider is going um, starting on the left side of your drawing um, and then working your way this way so that if you paint here I just have painted this and I'm this is wet and if I want to paint this and I like I personally like to rest my hand when I'm working so I have a little bit more control I always like just rest my hand but I don't want to rest my hand in wet paint because then I get paint on the side of my hand and if I don't realize that it's there and I move my hand, I get paint in other places that I did not intend to have paint. Uh, so another suggestion, again, is work from left to right if you're right-handed and vice versa if you are left-handed. You're going to work from this direction over if it's your left hand because you want to avoid sticking your hand in the paint. And um, if you notice, uh, I don't have this part of the canvas labeled, but that's because I don't typically label my canvas. I apologize for moving the camera. But if you look closely, you'll see that this area of the canvas actually does have um, numbers, and those correspond with the different colors that we have already pre-mixed and will be using. And they correspond with what I'm seeing in my picture um, that I'm working from as a reference. The lightest of light areas is the white, and then the next slightly darker area is a two, because white I considered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then of course black is number nine. Hopefully this is helpful and makes sense. Thank you for watching.